And I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed uh, the, the future state of APIs. Like I said, I'm an API creator and API consumer myself. Um, so, you know, if you're just joining us right now, we're on to our last presentation in this particular track. And I'm Aaron Lieberman. I'm the Cloud Practice Manager at Big Compass and an, an API aficionado. I've touched almost every part of, of APIs in, in my career. And um, today we have Jonas Lagoni, Senior Software Engineer on Async API at Postman. And he will present on how Async API can enhance your developer experience. So Jonas, whenever you're ready, you can share your screen and take it away. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Is it all good? I can see it. All right, perfect. So hello, everyone. So my name is Jonas. I am a senior software engineer at Postman, working on Async API in the open technologies teams um, that you just heard a little bit about from Fran. Um, now, just a quick backstory on me. Um, I started back in 2019 uh, contributing to Async API because I had a free time project that uh, that naturally needed the specification um, and especially the tooling because I wanted to automate as much as my coding as possible, as many developers probably uh, encounter. Um, now. And as most of you know, like as soon as you start automating things, like things take time. And this is the very reason why I am still here today since back then. Um, so I want to give you a talk about the mindset on tooling that we have uh, on Async API um, and how it might be different from other specifications, uh, and especially uh, why we think that tooling is uh, a necessity um, together with the specification, and it goes hand in hand. Um, I'll bring some light onto the existing tools that we have, uh, at what we are currently working on, um, and just a quick mention that whenever I refer to we, us, our tooling, I refer to the Async API community as a whole uh, because we are community driven. Uh, just to quickly mention it, um, earlier this year, we joined uh, Linux Foundation. Uh, so this was to ensure that uh, the foundation remained neutral um, no matter uh, which company is supported. Um, and any of these tools that I will be highlighting uh, throughout this talk are based on the community and uh, what they are working on. Now, at the core of all tool sets or all toolboxes, we have a parser. Uh, we want developers to be able to pass async API documents um, as well as validating those documents. Um, and providing a way for uh, developers to interact with the document. So this means that uh, by interaction, I mean accessing certain information within the document itself, as well as traversing over, uh, for example, channels, messages, components, whatever is in the specification. Um, at the moment, we have a JavaScript parser that is our main parser, uh, that is uh, our main focus point. Um, we also have a Go parser. It's currently uh, still work in progress, um, but this is just to emphasize also that even though that we only support JavaScript and Go parsers at the moment, like it all depends on your use case and what you as a developer need. Um, and you are most likely not the only one if uh, if you ever think that you need a specific parser in a specific language. And that's where collaboration starts. Um, a pain point that frequently come up when you talk about supporting different parsers in different languages uh, is that you want to make sure that each parser is compatible with the spec, which is why that we have our test compatibility kit um, 
that ensures it's it's basically just a collection of different uh, combinations of the async API uh, specification, uh, different combination of messages, headers, channels, servers uh, that should be supported and be valid or invalidated by the parsers and validators. Um, Something I did not include in the slides, but I just want to click quickly mention is that uh, we have been, or a, a pain point that also comes up is, or with parsers, is that it's highly coupled together with the, uh, with the specification. Meaning that if the specification changes versions or changes structure in any way, it affects the tooling and the tooling have to adapt to it. Um, so we are currently looking into ways that we can uh, that we can remove this coupling between the specification and the part or the tooling um, by taking a more general approach to um, uh, to structure it uh, based on event driven architecture in general. Um, but. It's still a work in progress, but it is a pain point we are definitely trying to solve. Um, the generator. So this was the very reason why I started contributing back in 2019, uh, because I did not want to manually write data models. Uh, I did not want to manually write uh, these code wrappers for uh, different protocol clients. Um, I wanted it to be automatic or a way to use the specification for it. Um, now the generator takes an async API document and pairs it together with something we call templates. Now templates are in general just a placeholder uh, that's um, that the data is not realized before it's paired together with the document. And the generator uh, utilizes the parser that uh, that I mentioned before. Um, this means that when you pair these two things, you get the output of a generated documentation, for example, uh, as we have here, which is just a simple markdown uh, representation of the service. Um, at the moment, the generator supports both uh, generating to a file, but also to a string in memory, because maybe you want to integrate the generator with an already existing tool. Um, the template itself, we have both, uh, we have two different kinds of uh, rendering engines. Uh, the one I showed uh, here is from the React rendering. Um, and we also support Nunjux templates. Um, now Nunjux is the old version or the, the old rendering uh, engine that we had, where React is a new one that, um, that solves a lot of pain points in terms of um, developer experience when you, you need to debug certain things or um, stack tracing when something goes, goes wrong with the template. Um, and of course, not everyone uses JavaScript or want to interact with the generator through uh, NPM or... Um, so therefore we provide both through a GitHub action, but also Docker image. Um, so you can use the JavaScript generator regardless of your environment. Currently we have uh, different kinds of official uh, templates. Um, we have for documentation, we have both for HTML, Markdown, um, and we also have the category I call uh, skeleton code templates, which is a wrapper to uh, the protocol uh, libraries, uh, which then generates simple functions that you can call instead of, uh, or based on your async API definition. We have both for Java Spring, uh, CloudStream, for Nets, uh, and Node.js for Kafka, MQTT, etc. And of course, you can create your very own local template. There's absolutely no limitations to what you want to generate. Um, it all depends on your use case. Um, 
Now, a problem that quickly occurs for skeleton code templates is uh, the need for data models. Um, you want to quickly access a class uh, representing the payload that's being uh, transferred. Um, now, these data models are quite difficult to generate, and it's definitely a pain point from a, a template or a developer that uh, creates templates. In Async API, currently, even though that, as Fran mentioned in the previous talk, allows different payload schemas uh, or different kinds, such as, for example, Avro, uh, behind the scenes, the parser uh, transforms that uh, definition to, uh, to JSON schema. Uh, this means that we have a, a standard um, a standard model uh, to use in our tools. The problem with JSON schema is that it's it's good for many things relating to validating data, but it's not so great when you want to convert those validation rules or at least complex validation rules to definitions. This means that at the moment each uh, template owner uh, has to um, handle this logic on their own. And it's just not maintainable in the long run. Um, so we kind of needed a library to take over this process or allow us to, um, uh, to help the developers. Um, now, we did end up developing our very own uh, library for this. Um, some of you, if you ever heard of QuickType before, it does a very similar thing. Uh, unfortunately, that library just didn't suit the needs that we had or the requirements we had for the library. Uh, and in the end, we decided to invest time into developing our own. Um, and to that end, we created Modelina. Uh, and the vision with the library was that we wanted to take any type of inputs, uh, async API documents, JSON schema, it could be a TypeScript class and convert them to other models. Um, at the moment, uh, the library is focusing on uh, the very minimal structure of a data model. This means the properties and be able to serialize and deserialize uh, the models. Um, we are thinking about how we can integrate this natively with the generator to allow templates developers to easier access uh, this library. Um, but it's uh, still a work in progress and not quite sure how we can integrate it actually. Um, we also have for those that want uh, code first um, instead of design first, uh, we have uh, JSON API which is uh, a code first tool for Java uh, that can build uh, async API documents directly in, the co in your code. We have a playground for people to easily play around with different, uh, or with the specification and easily get a, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, a visualization or a documentation uh, directly in the browser. Now the playground uses actually uses the generator uh, that I talked about earlier uh, and uses the HTML and Markdown template directly or uh, yeah templates uh, together with the generator to provide you with this uh, uh, with this output. Uh, we are working on uh, something called Studio, uh, which is a more elaborate uh, platform uh, where you can store multiple APIs uh, if, uh, to a user or a group um, or for teams. Uh, and underneath the HTML template and indirectly the play playground and Studio, we have React components. Uh, now, React components are uh, for you to easily render uh, UI components or your async API document in your own tools uh, wherever you would need them. This means that we, of course, support uh, the React components to be used in other frameworks such as, such as Angular, Vue, and Web components. Um, 
we also want to give you the possibility of converting between async API uh, versions. This means that we have uh, converters for, uh, for example, for converting the 2.0 documents to 2.1, which has just been released actually uh, this week, I think, or last week, I can't remember now. Um, and yeah, we of course have it in both JavaScript and Go at the moment. Um, now the rest of the tools that I'm gonna highlight are uh, highly work in progress uh, and to different extents. Um, the first one is the discover tool. When you have multiple async API documents and multiple applications, you want to get a visualization of uh, how the relationship is between them. This can, for example, be to generate planned UML diagrams or mermaid diagrams um, to get a clear visualization of uh, uh, how the different applications are connected between servers um, and which channels they are uh, interacting with. We are working on a gateway uh, which can take or support any protocol uh, and do both message validation based on your async API documents, uh, manipulation of the messages, etc. We also have a CLI in progress, um, which is going to be our main CLI for all tools, basically. So this means that you should be able to validate messages uh, or uh, validate the documents, um, manipulate the documents. Uh, it could be generating using our templates or generating models, uh, data models. Um, and what about if you don't want to learn about the spec, but just want a hum human-like interaction and um, and get uh, what you call and get an async API document out of it uh, based on the replies that you have to the bot? We also have a, something we call Fluffy Robot. So this is a simulation tool. This means that we pair up and uh, one or more async API documents together with a scenario. Now, a scenario could be a specific user story you want to test throughout your um, your system uh, or an end-to-end -end test that you want to execute. And the Fluffy Robot will then combine those two and execute that scenario in your system. A diff tool, uh, if you want to know the difference between uh, async API documents, um, this could, for example, be that if the payloads are not uh, correctly aligned or different from one another and uh, are uh, not compliant with each other. Um, it can be channels that are uh, somewhat uh, misspelled or uh, it can catch different things. Um, so basically just any discrepancies between the async API documents. Uh, an optimizer. Uh, in case that you generate async API documents uh, from code or through tooling, uh, um, this can mean um, utilizing the uh, reusability that's in the spec itself uh, through ref references um, uh, and different other kinds of things. And this basically just comes back to the vision that we have with tooling. Like we want to give the developer a seamless developer experience um, throughout the workflow uh, with the specification. And we want to try and solve as many pain points as we possibly can. Um, this means for your use case, but also from uh, the tooling perspectives, is there any pain points in the tools that, uh, that we need to solve? Um, and of course, almost, or a lot of use cases uh, are unique and you want it to be able to extend, uh, extend the implementation or uh, customize uh, the very behavior of the tool to behave the way that you want. Um, and this, and in the end, like collaboration and community driven, that is the very key uh, figures for this. This also means or come back to that, uh, it's not just async API that, uh, that we're trying to uh, to 
great tooling for, but it also, as you saw with Madalena, for example, it's for JSON schema itself, uh, trying to solve the pain point for uh, open API, uh, open API um, for data models, because they have the very same issues with JSON schema as we have, uh, at least the community have with the tools. Um, and of course, this comes back to we are community driven. There's absolutely no restrictions uh, on which tool belong in the async API organization. Um, so yeah, reach out. Um, and I hope at least that this talk maybe gave you an idea, which kind of, or at least an, a great overview of which kind of tools we have now in progress. Um, what we might be missing. Uh, you might have a very special use case where you would love to see uh, a specific tool that you need. Um, but yeah, that's actually the end of my talk. So yeah. Thank you all for having me. Thank you, Jonas. Great presentation on the async API. There's a couple questions here. Uh -huh. Um, so let's let's rapid fire. All right. So first one is um, can you maybe just elaborate a little bit how people can contribute? Sorry, I, I didn't catch it. I think my oh, yeah. internet Jonas, a bit there. So can you repeat the question? Yeah, simple question. It sounds like the community wants to contribute. Can you just elaborate a little bit on, on how the community can contribute? Yeah, of course. So the, the best way to, to contribute is Slack. Everything goes over Slack. Um, this is the day-to-day -day communication of tooling, what changes, what uh, what we need help with, uh, discussions, etc. Everything goes through uh, our Slack channel uh, at Async API. And if you have a tool that you want uh, inside or uh, that you want async API organization to support or uh, to include, it's just a matter of reaching out to one of the maintainers or uh, notifying us on Slack and, and start a discussion how we can can take it from there, actually. Great, OK. Uh, an anti-use case here actually came up. So a question about, is there you know quote unquote bad use case where you wouldn't want to use async API? I can't come up with one, <laughs> but I'm also biased a lot, uh, especially since I've been working on Async API for, I'd say quite a while now. Um, but yeah, I, I can't come up with, with a specific solution. There's of course different, um, different scenarios where Async API might not fit in your specific use case. Um, and if you think that it should, Again, it's just a matter of collaboration. Reach out, say, I'm missing this feature. Is there any way that, how can we take it from there, basically? OK. And final question, from your perspective, you know, working with all these languages and, and uh, different frameworks, having a good idea of APIs and the trends of APIs, do you have an idea if, if GraphQL or REST will take a stronger foothold in the industry? I have no idea. It's just a matter of speculation, right? Um, I, th I think that it really needs tooling, uh, especially from the REST or a open API world. Um, but I mean, there's, I have absolutely no idea who can take the lead there. And I think as Fran also mentioned in the last talk, right? We, we live in, in, in quite a, uh, in harmony, right? Where uh, we can, um, share different um, different use cases, uh, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. OK, those are the questions we have. Like I said, great presentation, and thank you. Thank you for having me. With that, that's the last session for this track. And we're going to go ahead and wrap up. Thank you, everyone.